in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Thank you very much. Good morning and welcome to our parish Eucharist on this, the Sunday before Lent. You're very, very welcome this morning as we celebrate this Eucharist at the High Altar of Mitcham Parish Church. Today the Church observes Racial Justice Sunday. And indeed this is something which churches and institutions and nations must be praying for day after day. So we will hold that as one of our intentions for the Eucharist today, that all may live in harmony and peace and respect for one another across our globe. And as we think today particularly about the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ, so we think about how we experience God and gain those insights into the Godhead through many different experiences perhaps in our lives, perhaps even in times of trial as we are experiencing at the moment. But whatever the situation, we know that the transfigured Christ gives us hope and gives us the image of glory in heaven with God the Father. So let us prepare our hearts and minds this morning by saying together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and in sacrament, let us sit or kneel and call to mind and confess our sins. In the midst of confusion and doubt, we find your grace, O God, and discover your eternal love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. There is none but you to uphold our cause when our sin cries out and our guilt is great. Christ, have mercy. Reach out to us, O God, and we shall be healed. Restore us, and we shall sing your praise. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together now the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we come to the collect for today and the beginning of this week. Let us pray. Holy God, you know the disorder of our sinful lives. Set straight our crooked hearts and bend our wills to love your goodness and your glory. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
are. So now pay attention to the first reason. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord. 
what is the good news announced to you? Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared with them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say for they were all terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Two cracking good readings this morning, I'm sure you'd agree. The Old Testament reading takes us into the Hebrew Scriptures to learn about Elijah in his last days on earth. Elijah was a holy prophet. Look at 1 Kings and 2 Kings, where today's story comes from. And the narrative speaks of his travelling with his chosen successor, Elisha and finally be taken up or assumed into the heavens by the chariots of Israel and their horsemen, taken up in a whirlwind. So this was Elijah's assumption right into heaven, to be with his God. Now, Elisha had been previously selected by having Elijah's mantle thrown over him. And now Elijah leaves this, his mantle, behind, the symbol of his authority. And Elisha picks it up and uses it by again striking it on the Jordan, just as Elijah had recently done. So he manages to cross back over the Jordan in the next few sentences in our story today. And of course, this actually echoes what Moses did before them, an action which parts the water and lets them cross safely on dry land. If you needed something more to prove that Elisha had taken on the mantle and was using the mantle of Elijah, I can't think of anything more strongly there. And Elisha, through viewing the departure of Elijah, also inherits that double dose of spiritual wisdom of the firstborn son. Because, of course, in Jewish tradition, it's the first son who gets the double portion of any inheritance. So he was clearly designated as Elijah's successor. And today we read in the Gospel 
the transfiguration story of Jesus. The transformation of the man from Nazareth into dazzling white and his direct encounter with both Moses and Elijah. Those two great symbols of the Hebrew people who both were directly able to communicate with God. Moses through his encounters on the mountainside and Elijah through his obedience and prophetic listening and his own voice. And through Moses and Elijah both and with their association with Jesus, this points us forward to the prospect of going to heaven that we believe is the focus and the ultimate endpoint of our faith. What Peter, James and John witness on the mountaintop tells us something of what we hope for in eternity. And also what we might well be hoping for as we consider the timelessness of eternity with God. So this story this morning, the transfiguration, brings us to consider how have we met God? For a big part of this hope that we are privileged to have is strengthened by perhaps our own experiences and ideas and feelings which we experience and use to describe the idea of seeing or feeling or sensing the presence of God. I'm sure for many of us there have been moments, be it standing on the top of a mountain or be it standing by the side of a river or a lake or be it engaging in prayer in a beautiful place that we really have sensed and experienced the presence of God. But you know it's almost impossible to describe what an experience of God is really like. It's difficult enough for even the great saints and the mystics, the pillars of the church, to describe it. And you've only got to look at the book of Revelation to realise how when you start describing such extraordinary things, so the stories become extraordinary. But it's true that whatever, whenever, however we end up seeing God, getting closer to God, it is never just a matter of a distant view of him. For seeing God, and let's just adopt that word, shall we, seeing God, even if only for a microsecond, prompts us to speak, to seek him, to embrace him, to want him, to know him, to touch him, to desire him, to want to be overwhelmed by him, and to wish beyond everything else, just like Peter, to hold on to that experience into eternity. And that's how we get our idea of heaven. How have we met God? Seeing God does not involve just the use of our eyes, but our mind, our soul and our whole being. We can see God because God made us able to know and see him. For he gave us his son that we might know his love and his generosity, his compassion and his sheer powerful love in an abundance that presents itself to us in the Gospels that does and should completely and utterly overwhelm us. And yet at the same time as that vision wonderfully overwhelms us, whenever that may have been, wherever that may have been, as it inebriates us and is more than we can ever hope for, we are reminded that God has worked this out so well that the truth and reality of the humanity of Jesus helps us to grasp this extraordinary picture and connect with God through our very humanness and the humanness of Christ Jesus, our brother. The transfiguration of Jesus reveals to us all that the vision of God, that seeing God is strangely both possible and impossible, 
forbidden and dangerous, yet intimate and wonderful, awesome and terrible, yet loving and personal. The Transfiguration points to a wonderful paradox of contrasts at the heart of our experience of our God. And we are taught through the experience of those very human disciples, Peter, James and John, who were terrified. They didn't know what to say. And so I expect we would follow their example. We'd, I'm sure, be speechless. And not only that, but probably we would not have the presence of mind like Peter to say to Jesus, can we build you each some accommodation? Dear Peter, desperately seeking a travel lodge for the three of them to stay in and to be kept, probably, so Peter, James and John could go back later and have another look at them and make sure that's what they were seeing. They were astonished by that experience, that experience which lasted just for a moment. And that's often what we find as we experience God as we see a wonderful vision of creation, as we experience a moment of deep love, as we find our way to God. As we approach now the time of Lent with Ash Wednesday, this very Wednesday, a time when we think of the very humanity of Jesus in his suffering and in his death, let us thank God for his transfiguration, which enables us to journey with Jesus, knowing at the back of our minds that Jesus, the Son of Man, is also the Son of God, and that our God will triumph. Here in the Mount of the Transfiguration is something more than we could ever imagine or desire or see or sense. And yet God in his majesty loves us and befriends us and saves us through our friend and our brother, namely Jesus Christ, our Lord. So this day as we contemplate his transfiguration, may the glory be to Christ Jesus, and to God be thanks and praise. Amen. And so we now move on to our intercessions as in the power of the Spirit and in union with our Lord Jesus Christ. We bring our prayers to the Father. Loving Father, this day as we contemplate the transfiguration of Jesus, we thank you for this vision which you give to your church. We thank you for this extraordinary idea that we can connect through Jesus Christ with heaven above, that we are blessed with the communion of saints around us, the souls and the spirits of the departed who ever continue to pray and be with us. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church throughout the world and beyond asking that our prayers for this country and for the world may be acceptable to you. We pray for Justin, our Archbishop, for Christopher and Richard, our Bishop, for Simon, our Archdeacon, and Rachel, our Area Dean. We pray, Lord, that all the churches in both Mitcham and Merton and Southwark in the United Kingdom and throughout the world may speak 
of your presence with us and your great glory in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we think of the transfiguration of Christ this day, we ask that as he glowed in dazzling white, and revealed himself as part of the Godhead, so we may remember that the whole of creation is part of God. And we ask you, Lord, this day to be with us as we remember Racial Justice Sunday. We ask you to be with us as we pray for equality and equity and understanding and love and compassion for all who live in this world, for every human being, regardless of race or origin or circumstance. Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ came to this earth for us all as a human being. May we be mindful of the fact that he came for all, and not just the few that he came to bring justice, that he came to bring love and compassion for all, not just the few. May we be, be spurred on to work for justice and peace and equity in everything that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are sick or suffering or in any kind of distress at this time. We pray especially for all those who mourn the loss of loved ones. We pray especially for those who are caught up in the situation with COVID and other severe illnesses. And we give thanks for the work of doctors, nurses, carers, key workers, all who are engaged in making things that little bit better at this moment in time. And we pray for those who continue to suffer in body, mind or spirit, bringing before you this day Sue Hawkyard, Margaret Goodair, Richard Wimbury, Coyote Bebican, Anne Kingston, Helen Kosti, Pauline Ueha, Sophia Sandra, Jeannie Oi, Betty Smith, Paul Barry, Chika Onunkwu, and Robert Willer. We unite our prayers with those in our intercessions book, and in a moment of silence we bring before you, Lord, those who we carry in our own hearts this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died, Father. We give thanks for their lives and their example and their love. We pray for the souls of Paul Sanders, the priest, Susanna Coleman, Margaret O'Sullivan, Mimi Bedford, whose funeral is this week, Eamon Andrews, Anslem Daniel, and Christian Onruaki. We pray for those known to ourselves, and we pray for those who here of mind falls about this time, giving thanks that we knew them and that they loved us. Rest eternal, grant them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves that we, like Peter, James, and John, may experience your presence with us, that we may be encouraged by that vision of your heavenly presence. 
and that vision of knowing that you were both the Son of Man and the Son of God. Let us hold on to that vision in times of stress and trouble, Lord. Let us use it to positively encourage us to walk closer, Lord, and in your footsteps. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we move to the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you very much. Let's share that peace with those around us and let us pray for those who we can't see but we know we would like to be with in church this morning. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, that will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. The Spirit is Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels, 
and archangels and with all the company of heaven. We proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heart and mind, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way after supper he took the cup and again he gave you thanks he gave it to them saying drink this all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the mother of God, Peter, Paul, John, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we give you glory and honor, be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. We 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Although we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Behold God's holy gift for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers spiritually at his table reflect his life in word and deed that all the world may know his power to change and to save. This we ask through the same Jesus Christ our transfigured and risen Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen indeed, and once again a very warm welcome to you this morning as you join us here at Mitcham Parish Church at the High Altar for our Parish Eucharist. It's good to have you here and to welcome you. Our next service, as usual, will be on Tuesday at 9.30 in the morning, as ever. Um, we never close, we never actually cancel services, this is all we can help it, so we will be here on Tuesday at 9.30. But then, of course, on Wednesday, we hit Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. And we will welcome you, hopefully, if you're at home particularly, at 10 o'clock in the morning when the parish Eucharist will be celebrated here again online. Um, so a parish Eucharist for Ash Wednesday at 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning. We are planning to make that service as clear as possible 
um, in the sense of it being Ash Wednesday. The one thing, sadly, of course, that we will not be able to do is welcome you into church for the ceremony of Ashen. But we would want you to feel that the service on Wednesday will be um, sufficient and adequate. And that there will be Ashen taking place here in church. And so if you have your palm crossed and wish to do the usual ritual, you could burn it at home or burn a little of it at home so that you have a little bit of ash that perhaps during our ceremony here online you could also use at home to actually inscribe a cross on your forehead as you do in church. Palm crosses are notorious for not burning very well and the best bit of advice I can give you is you need to dry it out in the oven first. That is the formula, and that's the way to do it. You'll be surprised how much moisture is actually kept in one of those palm crosses from year to year. But if it's not dry enough, a little time in the oven, you could even perhaps put it in today with a roast dinner, um, just dry it out first, and then you'll find that it actually burns a little bit more effectively. On Tuesday night, Shrove Tuesday, we will be gathering as usual online to greet one another in our last social encounter for the next few weeks because the following Tuesday we will be starting our study of our Lent course and we will be doing that right the way through to Easter Day. Now, you will have received details about not only the little book which we're hoping that most of you now have. If you haven't got a copy yet, can you please be in touch with me today at the vicarage and we'll get you a copy. And I have been letting you know also that this bigger box book, Living His Story, is the supplement to the little one. So if you'd like to get hold of that, you need to be in touch with one of the online booksellers and to get that. But the details are all in your weekly newsletter, either online or by email or in the post. We look forward to gathering and spending time across Lent, and who knows, perhaps by Easter time we might be seeing things improving and getting a little bit better. We may be able to open our church doors again by then. We hope that that might be the case, but we cannot be certain at this time. And the one thing I do know is that I am still hearing of people who are actually just contracting the coronavirus now, and they are local. And this actually just cautions us that in actual fact the virus is still around. There are a lot of people who have not received the vaccination. There are a lot of people who are still very vulnerable. So please continue to actually follow all the government guidelines at this time. Even if you've been vaccinated, it doesn't stop you from carrying the virus. So whoever you are and whatever your current circumstances, be careful, stay safe, stay at home as much as you can and look after each other. That's a really important thing we must take in mind for these next few weeks, particularly as things start to relax a little. Enough of me telling you what to do. I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday morning, perhaps Tuesday evening on the Zoom meeting or on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock or even next Sunday, the first Sunday in Lent. Whatever it is, take care and God bless and be with you this week. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, our transfigured Lord, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve our Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.